how to reinvent yourself in 21 days. If there's a goal that you've been working towards or trying to work towards and you feel like you're not able to get to it, you're not able to achieve your goal no matter how hard you try, then this is the perfect video for you. Maybe you feel like you've tried a bunch of time. Maybe it's something like weight loss. You feel like you've tried a bunch of times but you've never been able to follow through and get the end result that you're looking for. I saw a video the other day that said if you've been talking to ChatGPT for a while, then you can actually ask it, what do I think my problem is versus what is actually really my problem and why can't I seem to achieve the goals that I want? So of course, I immediately typed this into my ChatGPT just to see what would happen. And the answers were pretty generic and general to be honest, but one thing stuck out to me is the idea of alignment. Alignment between your actions, your habits, and your goals. How much time, effort, and energy you think you're putting in towards your goal versus what's actually happening in reality. Because maybe you're like me and you've been telling yourself this story about how hard you work, how much you put into something, how much time and energy you've put in trying to get to your goal. But maybe the story that you're telling yourself is not actually lining up with reality. So I really recommend that you kind of journal on this Ask yourself if your actions and your daily habits and routines really align with the goals that you have for yourself. So because I was thinking about this, I kind of mentally kept track of my habits and my actions for a few days, basically this past week. And what was kind of shocking to me is how little time and effort I actually put in to work towards the goals that I have. Because in my mind, the story that I tell myself is I work so hard, I do so much to try and achieve my goals. But in reality, what was actually happening is I was procrastinating a lot. And a lot of the times I would choose to do something more comfortable and more fun versus working towards a goal that I would have. So instead of maybe working towards my fitness goals or working towards the goals that I have for my career or my finances, I would instead just procrastinate and go on TikTok or I'd read stories, I'd just read something that was entertaining. And this is so normal because your brain loves comfort. We as people love comfort. It feels great. We don't like change and it feels uncomfortable. And it's actually the idea of change that you don't like versus change itself. So if you've ever had someone tell you that there are changes coming, maybe in your work or maybe at school, you probably hated it because the idea of change probably makes you feel uncomfortable. But then when the change actually happened, you probably realize it wasn't actually that bad. And this is because what's familiar will always feel better to you even if it's not necessarily great. And this is why people will get stuck in situations that they don't like, or they'll get stuck in a rut. Maybe you've experienced this yourself where you feel like you're not happy with how things are, but you're having a hard time breaking out of it and changing it. So the key to making the change, and the reason we're doing it in 21 days is because it only takes 21 days for a habit to stick. And the idea is that you're going to rebrand your identity in 21 days. If you can stick to something for 21 days, it will have a permanent lasting effect on you. And the key is to actually reframe it as your identity rather than things you have to do. So instead of saying, I have to work out, I need to work out, you want to say something like, I am a healthy person, I am a fit person, I am an active person. When you say it in that way, when you frame it in that way, what you're doing is you're aligning that identity with the things that you're trying to achieve. So instead of feeling like it's a big chore that you have to do, it's really just more natural. It's just who you are and you do these things because that's just who you are. And this might seem odd at first, but trust me, you've changed so much as a person. If you look back 5 to 10 years, you probably feel like you're such a different person now than you were then. It's just that the changes were gradual, so you don't necessarily feel it. But whatever crazy, wild changes you want to make, maybe you're really unhealthy right now, but you want to be healthy and fit. Saying I'm a healthy fit person might feel really odd and uncomfortable at first, but the more you say it with repetition, you're going to start to embrace that identity. And then doing things like working out or eating healthy will feel so natural to you. It'll feel right. And this is the key to success, is reframing things. An example from my personal life is 
I would go on really limiting, restricting diets and I would tell myself I can't eat things. So maybe you have experienced this before. And those always fail because when you tell yourself you can't do something or when you tell yourself you have to do something, immediately you just don't want to do it. Psychologically, mentally, you just, it's gross. You don't want to do it. But if you reframe it, so I reframed it to focus on eating more protein and focus on eating more real food, less processed foods, and eating more vegetables. And because of that, naturally the processed foods will decrease, all of the sugar and carbs will decrease if that's your focus. And it's not a limiting framework, so if I want carbs, if I want something super unhealthy, I can still have it. So when you're not being restricted, you don't feel the need to like rebel, and you don't feel the need to cave and have a crazy binge on the weekends. So the way that you frame things and the way that you present things to yourself is actually very important because it's going to really help you stick to something and it's going to help you stay so much more motivated than if you were just to tell yourself, I need to do this, I have to do this. That makes it feel like a chore versus this is just who I am. Then everything will feel really natural and it'll feel right. It's best if you can stick to one to three goals at a time. Honestly, I would really just focus on one. Think about what's the most important thing that you want to accomplish. What's the one thing that would really make a huge impact on your life, that would make you so happy, that would really make you feel more confident, that would make your life so much better. Just focus on that one thing. You can do one to three, but if you spread yourself too thin because your energy and your attention in a day, there's only so much of it. So the more energy and attention you can focus on like the most important thing, or the three most important things in your life, the better the results are going to be. You don't want to pick like a bunch of different goals. Once you achieve these one to three goals, then you can start adding on more. But in this 21 days, we just want you to get into the habit and into the identity of somebody who sticks to something, somebody who commits and follows through and gets what they want. That's really the more important thing. It's not really about seeking external validation. It's more about seeking internal validation. It's more about becoming somebody who keeps the promises that they make to themselves. So that's what I want for you. And that's what you want. You don't want to be someone who never follows through on the promises that they make. Because if you're someone who never follows through on the promises that you make to yourself, then you're going to really start to feel your confidence decrease. You're not going to have that trust with yourself. And that's really important. You're going to really need that trust and that confidence to propel you to where you want to be. So planning out your days and your weeks and the habits that you're going to stick to. When you don't have a plan, you're much more likely to fail versus just sitting down and writing down a plan, putting it on your calendar. You're so much more likely to actually stick to it because you're taking the guesswork out of it. There's no like, should I do this? Do I feel like doing this today? So if you're an emotional person like I am, and you don't always feel like doing things like I do. I can totally relate to that. There are so many days where I just don't do anything because I don't feel like it. But to combat that, you need to have a plan. And instead of making like a to-do list, a general generic to-do list, it's better to create routines and habits that you can stick to. It's going to be a lot easier than just having a big to-do list. So if you want to lose weight, for example, then your routine would be to work out every day maybe you work out three to four times a week. Whatever it is, make sure that you have it down so that you can set yourself up for success. And then maybe that means that you have to go to the grocery store on the weekend and meal prep. Again, it's about setting yourself up for success. So if you know there are certain days in the week where you're really busy, I wouldn't necessarily plan tasks for those days because that's kind of like setting yourself up for failure. Because if you have a busy day and you don't feel like it and you know you're not going to have time, but you really want to squeeze it in and then it doesn't happen, you might feel very discouraged. So maybe for those days you plan something smaller, something easy, something super achievable so that you get that feeling of checking off a task. But for the more complicated or challenging projects and tasks, you put those on days where you know that it's, gonna be, that it's not going to be a super busy day. You're going to have the time, you're going to have the energy. When you plan it out in this way, it becomes a lot more digestible and you're really just setting yourself up for success because you've already taken into account how much time and energy you realistically have to be able to give your goals those days. The next one is to reflect. Maybe you're somebody who is really hard on themselves and 
maybe you have negative self-talk and that really hurts your self-confidence. When you hurt your self-confidence in that way, when you talk to yourself in a negative way, it is actually so much more harmful than you even realize because over time, you're really just beating yourself down to the point where you feel like you can't achieve your goals because you feel like all of these negative, terrible things about yourself and that's the identity that you take on and that's the identity that you embrace. So take time to journal. Journaling is actually so effective and it's gonna help you so much even if you don't want to, if you're lazy, write like one paragraph, that's all you need or set a timer and just write for one minute. I promise you the more you reflect and the more you think about the way that you think, the more secrets you're gonna unlock about yourself. And these secrets can be so powerful when it comes to making the changes that you want to make. And one of the most helpful journaling prompts that you can do is about things that you have accomplished in the past, times where you have followed through on something, times where you had a goal and you achieved it. And it can be anything so small. If you're sitting here thinking, I don't know, I feel like so negative about myself, then that's a sign that you that you probably have negative self-talk. So work on that by journaling about the things that you have been able to successfully accomplish in the past. That's gonna help build you up as well. All right, that's it for today's little video. I hope that you liked it. If you did, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.